She said that you told her that you loved her. <laughs> it's a joke. Really, Sarpa? That's how you're gonna play it? Deny, deny, deny? She must be joking? Well, I really don't think Shekinah believes you. And that fake laugh? Sorry, it fooled no one. So does that now mean that Shekinah will finally see all of the red flags staring her in her face? Maybe I do trust him blindly. I don't know. Sounds like I'm giving him so many passes. <laughs> Damn it. Sapa's got the fake laugh down to a fine art, and Shekinah seems to be an expert at the I can't believe I fell for it, damn it, <laughs> laugh. Yeah, this love story sounds like a bad sitcom. So <laughs> before we dive into all of this craziness, let's just rewind to the start. So the last we saw the pair, they'd just had a disastrous meal with Sapa's cousin. Sapa was busy stuffing money down a belly dancer's bra and teaming up with his cousin to try and convince Shekinah not to open up the Pandora's box, to just ignore all of his exes who had been reaching out to her on social media. But unfortunately, that belly dancer incident really seemed to help Shekinah make up her mind. She decided to go and meet Sarpa's ex anyway, against his will. And she soon learned that not only had Sarpa told his ex that he loved her, something he claimed he'd never said to any lady ever before, but to make matters worse, she also learned that Sarpa seemed to be using the exact same play-by-play -play formula on both women, Shekinah and his ex, and God knows how many other women too. This morning I met up with one of Sarper's exes and I want to confront him about everything that she told me because I do feel foolish at the end of the day with the things that she told me today. Now, Shekinah says that she feels foolish, but I think there's also more to it than just that. She's also clearly deeply hurt. It must hurt to know that everything Sarper did and said to her was also said to other women. Yeah, talk about bursting her bubble. It's very hard to keep up the pretense somehow think that you're the special chosen one when you now know he's been spouting exactly the same lines to thousands of other women as well. But for all the pain that she's currently feeling, if there's a slight silver lining to all of this, it's that Sapa clearly knows he has some making up to do. You see, although he doesn't yet know what his ex has told Shekinah, what he does know is it's probably a good move to try and preemptively accumulate some brownie points. And it's for that reason that he's strategically chosen to meet up with Shekinah at this shop. I've been asking Sarper to get me a vanity for months and it feels like he's finally doing it today because he's concerned about what I've learned from Norm. Now, thankfully, Shekinah is fully aware that this is just another attempt by Sapa to manipulate her. Like, is it just me, or does even this seem to be a tactic from Sapa's playbook? Don't they always seem to end up at a furniture store every time that Sapa's in trouble? And also, more to the point, considering we were told they're experiencing financial difficulties at the moment, considering their plan is supposedly to move to the States, is buying, <laughs> is buying furniture really the best idea right now? Well, it actually turns out that they can't find what they're looking for. So instead, they make themselves at home in the store. They take a seat on the couch in order to begin a very difficult conversation. And immediately, it becomes very clear that Sapa is extremely nervous. She is coming from meeting one of my exes. I don't have any clue what she says to Shekinah. I'm too concerned because they can affect my relationship with Shekinah. He's acting very timid and you can see that there's actually real anguish on both of their faces. So please put me out of my misery, says Sapa. Please tell me what did you discuss with my ex? And as he's saying that, you can see from his face he's fully aware that he might be in real trouble right now. Well, I learned a lot, says Shekinah. Your actions really affected your ex. She was very affected by the way you treated her. In a good way or in a bad a way? A bad way, of course. In a bad way, I treated her. 
In a good way or a bad way? Are you kidding me? Yes, Sarpa, the woman that you slept with and then discarded, ghosted and never responded to again, does feel like you treated her in a bad way. Like, he's acting like the notion she may have been adversely affected by him is a complete shock. He's amazed by that. He can't comprehend it, which really goes to show how he truly thinks he's God's gift to women, doesn't he? So Shekinah continues her questioning. She asks him, how real were you with this other woman? Did you perhaps give her any false hope? She said that you told her that you loved her. <laughs> it's a joke. This might just be some of the worst acting I've ever encountered. Sapa's laugh is about as fake as it's possible to be. Sorry, but it's just not convincing. Like, Knowing that his relationship with Shekinah could potentially depend on what he says next, you'd have thought he might try just a little bit harder. And I'm not the only one that seems to think that. Just check out Shekinah's face. She really isn't buying this crap. His laugh is totally fake and forced. I've never heard him laugh like that before. And I don't know why she would make something like that up. Yeah, not only is Shekinah not buying it, but she's also ready to push further. She wants answers. In particular, she wants answers about all the similarities that seem to be emerging. She tells him, I can see that this is a pattern. She literally uses that word, pattern. You seem to use the same tactics on all women. She uses that word too, tactics. So help me understand, says Shekinah. If you claim to have never told any other woman other than me that you love them, why exactly were you so sure about me? Why were you so quick to use that word with me, she asks. And in three days, I texted you that I love you. But not like that, you know? I love to being with you kind of it is. That is a feeble excuse, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, I text you I love you, but not because I actually love you. It's, be it's because I love being with you. Come on, no one's buying that, are they? Surely. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what he was saying. This is just a desperate attempt to try and backtrack. Now, thankfully, Shekinah isn't buying it. She's ready to call Sarper out on his crap. In fact, she reminds him of how he actually lied to her too. Remember when we first met, she says. Remember how you told me you loved me, you tricked me into thinking we were in an exclusive relationship, but then I found out we weren't. You made me believe that you weren't seeing other people. And then when I came to visit you for a week on my second trip here, you said, now this is real. Yeah. I said but I thought Friday. you were already being faithful to me. Wow. Okay, so this is the first time that we've heard of this. We'd never previously been told that Shekinah was aware that Sapa had cheated on her. Now, granted, it was the very, very early days of their relationship, but that doesn't change the fact that Sapa fed Shekinah a crock of lies, told her he loved her, tricked her, manipulated her into believing that they were exclusive, he wasn't sleeping around, while all the while he was doing what he always does anyway. Hearing this, you can definitely understand why Shekinah has questions, why she believes Sarpa's ex. But just listen to how Sarpa tries to weasel his way out of this. I really don't remember that time, but the real you thing tell was me you after have the that, best memory all the time until it's convenient week, for you not that. to. Ah yes, selective amnesia. What a wonderful tool. Sorry, Sapa, but I don't remember just isn't a valid excuse. Why don't you remember? Has he said I love you to that many women that he's now got his timelines confused? Now, perhaps sensing that there might be a risk of an argument erupting in their store, the store owner now kicks them out. He tells them it's closing time, we need to shut up shop. And Sapa takes this opportunity to try and reassure both Shekinah and us that all of that was in the past. He used to be an arsehole, but that's just not him anymore. I transformed to a lovey-dovey, fluffy, fluffy bam, bam You know, right now I'm a serious relationship lovey-dovey guy. I love that. <laughs> that's such a great phrase. Lovey-dovey, fluffy, fluffy bun-bun. 
Look out for that. I guarantee I'll use that in an upcoming video. Look, the key takeaway here is that Sapa really wants us to believe that he's a changed man. So changed, in fact, that now all of a sudden his memory seems to have come back to him. In the back of a taxi, seemingly on a mission tonight to make as many members of the public as uncomfortable as possible, Sapa now starts to open up about his ex. You know that girl, as I remembered, we matched on the internet, few dates, it was a friend with benefits relationship. Hmm, interesting. Are you sure your memories come back okay, Sapa? That's a very, very different version of events to what your ex has told Shekinah, remember? She was pretty clear that they were together for a number of months. It wasn't just a few dates, it was a few dates a week. Like, why would she lie about that? asks Shekinah. But again, Sapa's only tactic is to deny, deny, deny. I never deceived anyone, he desperately tries to tell her. But unfortunately for him, Shekinah's just not buying it. She's connected all the dots and she doesn't like what she sees. You are very good at what you do. You have certain tactics that make women fall for you very easily. It's, they are not tactics, babe. They are That's though. That's me. Yet yeah, she's spot on, that's exactly what they are. They are tactics, regardless of how much he tries to deny it. If the guy's sending exactly the same messages to multiple women, all with the same goal in mind, what else do you call that? That's a tried and tested playbook, isn't it? And it's this realisation, again, it's the realisation that she isn't that special, she isn't as special as she thought she was, that now has Shekinah questioning the very essence of their relationship. I'm feeling doubt, I'm feeling afraid. I wonder if I have been vulnerable and opened myself up to the wrong person. Yeah. Better late than never is all I can say to that. This is precisely what her friends and family warned her about. Now, Shekinah goes on to say that what happens next is going to tell her a lot about who Sapa really is. If he doesn't come clean, if he doesn't own up to his mistakes, she says, then I'll know without doubt what kind of character this man is. I'll know I can't be with him. So... Over to you, Sapa. Are you now finally ready to admit that your actions have hurt people? I know I didn't deceive anyone, but I know I made upset many girls in my past. I just want to talk. Okay, good. It's a start. Now that they're finally back in the privacy of their own home, Sapa seems to finally be able to self-reflect, and not just by looking at the mirror. He's finally admitting that, in his own words, he has hurt many girls before. So will this be enough? Is this progress enough to reassure Shekinah? The way that you've potentially treated women, you know, affects me. And I know that you admit to being a player, but I just, I just don't want to get played by you. She knows he's a player. She even knows the exact tactics that he uses. And yet somehow, somehow she's still desperate for him to say something that will make her feel special again. Her hope is that if he can now finally take responsibility for his past, maybe that will mean he'll change in the future. Now, Sapa latches onto this opportunity that she's given him. He starts to argue his case. He tells her, I've changed everything for you. Why would I do that if I was playing you? I was a lonely wolf before you. I was walking on snow and leaving no traces or footprints behind. I was so confidential. Sorry, Sapa, you've totally lost me. Is that a saying in Turkish that hasn't translated properly or something? Like, does he really think that <laughs> does he really think that wolves don't leave tracks? I don't know. Like, it's it's a strange metaphor, but for whatever reason, it seems to be working for Shekinah. She's lapping it up. She loves everything he's saying. Now, despite the weird way that it's come out, what he's trying to say is, in the past, he was a lone ranger. He covered his tracks. He never shared any traces of the women he was with. He didn't share them on social media, and he didn't introduce them to his family. But with Shekinah, that's totally different. He's now happy to leave footprints. At least see the progression I have made for you. A lot I of. do. I see it. I see it. And it makes me so hopeful, but that also is so scary. 
And just like that, right before our very eyes, you can literally see him pulling Shekinah back. Now, she still has doubts. She does tell us she's worried he might one day slip back into his old ways, his old habits. Habits that formed over many, many years, decades even. But it's very clear she's desperate for this to work. She really does believe it can work. She believes him. She believes he's changed. But there is still one question she needs an answer for. Did you tell your ex you loved her? She asks. And Sarpa absolutely denies it. Not only that, he goes as far as to say, she never said it to me either. If a girl told you she loved you, you would stop yes, talking to her? Yes, because it's something going serious. Mm -hmm. And I don't want. I didn't want with, with none of them. Now, Sarpa's reasoning seems to convince Shekinah. She believes him. She believes that he was that attached to his playboy lifestyle that if any woman were to express feelings, he'd run a mile. Like that, choosing to believe that logic again makes her feel special, which is ultimately what she wants. And what Sarpa says next seems to really turn the tide. He finally takes the tiny bit of responsibility that Shekinah was hoping to see. I, I made them upset maybe, you are right. And I'm so regretful about those, but I didn't play intentionally with anyone. Look, there is some growth here, right? It's undeniable. Only last night at dinner with his cousin, both of them, both he and his cousin, were adamant that any woman that got hurt was their own fault. Now, 24 hours later, Sarpa is at least expressing some regret about hurting those girls. But my only problem here, my big question here, is is this change genuine and authentic? Or is it just another manipulation tactic? Is he just saying what he knows Shekinah needs to hear? Whatever the truth, it's worked. Shekinah now believes him, or at the very least, she wants to believe him, even though deep down, she knows it could be a big mistake. Maybe I do trust him blindly, I don't know. Sounds like I'm giving him so many passes. <laughs> Damn it. Shekinah's such an interesting character. She plays the role of bimbo quite well, but she's not dumb. And she's also very self-aware, like she knows exactly how this is going to look to everyone. But the thing is, she just doesn't care. She's madly head over heels in love with the guy. She's a helpless romantic. She wants to believe more than anything that he's changed, that she's the special one that what they have is real. So could it be true? Is that really the case? Or is she just being naive? I just hope that this is not a huge mistake that I'm making. I will leave him for good if I find out that he's been lying to me. Will you, Shekinah? Will you really? I don't know. Look, at this point, it's getting harder and harder to see what exactly it will take, what she needs to see before her very eyes in order for her to actually not believe him. Sorry, but the more passes she ends up giving, the less and less likely it becomes that she'll ever leave. But at least there is one thing that I agree with Sarpa on. I was a cook before you. And right now, I transformed into a peacock. I mean, with my feathers, I'm trying to impress you, my partner. Yeah, <laughs> Sapa really does have some interesting animal analogies this week, doesn't he? But those aside, just check out how happy they both now look. They're both very relieved. This is more fun and laughing than I think we've ever seen them have. But I can't help but wonder how long this will last. How long before another issue, another X perhaps, pops back up.